This is the path towards the next level of self-improvement. During a cold winter's day, a strange looking man was walking through a fresh plot of snow. He was a tall man with lanky features, dressed in snow boots, a pair of heavy jeans, three layers of long sleeved waffle shirts, and a fur lined hat. His bright, piercing blue eyes and thick, dark eyebrows were the only visible facial features because the lower half of his face was covered with a red linen scarf. As he forcefully pushed his way through the knee-deep snow, he finally arrived at the fence. It was a long way from the road, so any hope of reaching it by car had been out of the question. As far as he knew, nobody else knew about this place except for him and one other person. With the agility of a young man, he hoisted himself up and over the fence. When he hit the ground with a small thud and brushed himself off, he had trouble remembering which way he was supposed to head. It had been 30 years since he was last here, and the amount of snow covering the ground certainly didn't help either. After trying to remember that fateful day that led him here so long ago, he finally realized the direction he needed to head. Through the treacherous conditions, rugged bushes that you could barely see sticking out of the ground, and the snowflakes that were smacking his face like hail, he finally made it to the middle of the open field. Out of his large backpack, he grabbed a shovel and started to dig. And after about 10 minutes, he hit a hard spot that let out a clang when it made contact with his shovel. This must be it, he said to himself. He got down on his knees and brushed away at the dirt with his hands to reveal a metal capsule that was clearly well aged. He stared at it for a few seconds before opening, just letting all the memories flood back. And finally, with a smile on his face, he turned the lever and opened it. Thirty years before this event took place, the man with the piercing blue eyes was your average 18-year-old teenager. Misguided, uninformed, and confused. His role models were slim to none. Growing up, his parents were always there for him, but not in the ways which allowed his human spirit to grow. They provided all the necessities of life for him food, a formal education, shelter, and finances. But when it came to matters of purpose, meaning, and hope, he was left unbalanced. Life seemed so strange to him. Despite being surrounded by others almost all the time, he felt isolated. He'd get lost in his own world, and when surrounded by his own inexplicable thoughts and feelings, he wondered if anyone could ever relate. He eventually concluded that this could not be the case, since everyone else around him seemed to be having a much easier time figuring out this whole life thing. After all, their outward appearances showed no signs of similarity to the internal battles that plagued his everyday experience. They'd always say to him, Yo, man, what's with you? You always seem like you're in another place when you're around us. And all the boy could do was shrug, laugh, and give some crappy excuse like, Nah, I'm cool. I just have a bad attention span. One day, after finishing his homework, he found his thoughts to be much more intrusive than usual. So he moved himself out of his desk chair, turned off his lamp, which was the only light source that was on in his room, and let his whole body fall onto his bed at once, with his legs dangling off on the side. His parents were already asleep, and the little sound that could be heard came from the ambience of the cars that rarely passed by on the street outside of his window. As he stared at the ceiling of his dark room, he felt a sudden emptiness and hollowness cast over him. And because his eyes were incapable of vividly seeing his surroundings, his field of vision started to hallucinate different shapes and forms that reflected his current mental state. He found himself in a trance. What manifested on his ceiling was a depiction of a very heavy snowfall in an open field with a singular man standing in the frame. The snowflakes falling down were about the same size of the man, and each one that fell had a different word inscribed into it. Purpose, drive, ambition, action, and mindset were some of the few that he saw, but the last and biggest one of them to fall read, Self-Improvement. In this trance-like state, he thought he could start to hear a faint voice coming from the man in the hallucination. And when listening more intently, he realized the man was, in fact, talking. He was saying the same four words over and over repeatedly, and those words were, Don't capture the dove. The instant he fully heard it, it felt as though the words had physically struck a lightning bolt throughout his body, and the manifestation quickly evaporated. He sat up panting, with his heart beating faster than a newborn kitten. 
What the hell just happened? He said to himself. Was I dreaming just then? Who was that guy? He was having immense trouble figuring out what it all meant. And when he tried to look up the significance of that last statement on the internet, his search came back with no leads. He knew he needed to talk to someone about the incident, but he was afraid of opening up to his friends about it. They'd probably just label him as crazy and tell him he's acting weird again. He also didn't feel comfortable telling his parents. Although they tried as much as they could to help, their ability to console and provide solutions to his complex problems always fell short. So he decided to turn to therapy. Although hesitant, he had always wanted to see if a professional could prove to be useful. And after searching to see what would be the best option for therapy online, he ended up going with the sponsor of today's video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp ended up assessing his specific needs and matching him with his own licensed professional therapist. He found out that they had over 20,000 therapists on their platform and were adding more to meet demand. When talking to the therapist, it felt as though for the first time he could express his inward feelings and bring them to the surface without the fear of being judged. And the therapist ended up giving him actionable steps he could focus on that could help him find some of the answers he was looking for out of life. He started communicating on BetterHelp in as little as 48 hours, and he found out that the service is available for clients worldwide. He was able to log into his account and send a message to his therapist at any time, and he scheduled weekly phone and video calls too. Although he didn't need it, it comforted him to know he could change his therapist easily and for free if he needed to. It was cheaper than traditional offline therapy and financial aid was available. He wanted to share this discovery of better help with others too, so he told his friends that if they wanted to join the over 2 million people who are improving their relationships with themselves and others, they could go to betterhelp.com slash Cole. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash Cole. And a special offer of getting 10% off their first month was attached to that too, if they went to betterhelp.com slash Cole. Just as the therapist suggested, he decided to try to find his answers in self-improvement. What further reinforced his decision was the fact that the big the biggest snowflake in his manifestation had self-improvement as the text. And for the first time in his life, he finally felt like he had some sort of direction. With the most powerful educational resource at his fingertips, he decided to dig into the meaning behind this whole self-improvement thing. Upon looking up the definition, he found that self-improvement was the improvement of one's knowledge, status, or character by one's own efforts. Although rather ambiguous, it gave him a general idea of what to do, but he still felt like he needed more concrete, actionable advice. So he decided to dive deeper. Places online such as YouTube or Google gave him the actionable steps he was looking for. With the new journal he ordered off of Amazon, he compiled all the information he found from different self-improvement channels, sites, and articles, and narrowed it down to what he called the five pillars of self-improvement. And those five pillars were lifting weights, meditation, reading, diet, and sleep. With the five pillars of self-improvement laid out in front of him visually, he set out five goals. Gain five pounds of muscle, meditate every day, read 10 pages a day, eat 80% whole foods, and sleep seven to nine hours a night for the next three months. The idea of having something to work towards brightened his previously shaded mind. He felt like he was a hero in a movie, ready to go through a training arc and he was excited to see what would come out of his newfound motivation. For the next three months, the boy started on the path towards improving. As if he was an RPG character in a video game, he gathered the resources he needed for his next level, used them to improve his abilities, and repeated the process over and over. He didn't really stop to think about what he was doing or question why he was doing it. He simply just kept the dream of accomplishing those things in his mind, and the idealized version of himself started to grow ever more clear. He felt like he was truly doing what he was meant to do. On the second to last day before the three month mark, he had to go on a grocery haul to pick up some things for a lentil soup he was cooking. By now, not much in the boy's physical appearance had changed. He was still that tall, lanky boy with just a bit more tone on his arms and chest. But something about his aura had changed. He noticed that his closest friends started to unintentionally treat him differently, and it was as if their individual human spirits were reflecting his newly gained sense of self-worth and respect onto him. Upon this realization, he said to himself, the extent to which all human beings are connected with and influenced by one another is much stronger than I had previously thought. The observation brought him to a state of being simultaneously at peace, but also desperately hungry for more of the same respect he just experienced because he now knew that he vastly underestimated the extent to which he could bend his reality. Confidently and carefully, the boy loaded up his usual groceries and headed out of the store. With one heavy bag in each hand, he waddled his way to his car and put the groceries on the hood while he took out his keys. But before he could unlock it, he was startled by a large figure laying on the side of a banged up red truck. 
The figure was looking directly at him and was dressed in baggy black pants, steel-toed boots, a long leather jacket, and a pair of goggles that rested on his upper head. He had sharply defined features, but looked well-aged. By the look of his wrinkled forehead and rugged skin, he was most likely in his 40s or 50s. For a moment, the man reminded the boy of the man he saw in his manifestation, but he soon dismissed that idea since this man was missing a few key features. Normally, the boy wouldn't dare to speak to an intimidating stranger, but his confidence from the past several months gave him enough pep to muster up the courage to say something. Hey, can I help you with something? The boy said. The man kept staring at the boy, but did not respond. Uh, okay, I'm gonna go now. He opened the passenger door and put the groceries on the seat. As he walked over to the driver's side with his back turned to the man, the odd looking fellow finally spoke up. So, how's your self-improvement journey coming along? Confused and taken back, uh -huh. the boy halted in his tracks. He slowly turned to meet the man's eyes. What are you talking about? Who are you? The boy said. Am I wrong? Okay. You are on self-improvement, aren't you? Said the man. And just how could you have figured that out? Have you been stalking me? The man chuckled. No, I don't need to stalk you to see. You've got a certain kind of aura surrounding you. It's an aura one can only sense if they too have been on self-improvement. It's a fine path you're starting there, boy. Oh, well, thanks, the boy said. So that means you do self-improvement too? If that's the case, why can't I see your aura? That's because you haven't figured it out yet. Our auras differ, and that much is clear to me. You've gotten off to a good start, but I hope you'll figure it out soon. Figure out what soon? Are you trying to say that self-improvement isn't the right path towards a fulfilling life? Oh, no, of yeah. course not, said the man. But let me ask you something. Everything you've done on this path so far to shape yourself into a better you, have you ever even stopped to question the validity of your sources? Or do you just blindly do what they tell you to? Well, I guess I haven't, the boy said. But they are where I want to be. They are more skilled, successful, have more mental fortitude, and more status. That's enough for me to trust them. Yes, that's quite true, said the man. But have you thought about why you are even doing all of these things in the first place? And when you get to the place where you've always wanted to be, what will you do then? The boy paused for a few seconds, then said, well, I'm doing them because it helps give my life meaning. It makes me feel better and I feel like I can be a more functioning member of society through these things. As for what I will do when I get there, well, I haven't really thought of that yet. I figured as much, said the man. Allow me to give you some advice on your journey. Chasing goals can become addicting. The race to get one step closer to the man whom society will value will have you adopting traits and philosophies that don't at all align with your spirit. And as a result, you may forget who you are. Regardless, you will hit your milestones. I can see it within your aura. But that insatiable desire for more will continue to haunt you until you reach the next level of self-improvement. The next level of self-improvement? The boy said. What's that supposed to mean? Well, if I gave away the answer to that, you'd miss out on some valuable life lessons. Listen, leave your cars and groceries here and come with me if you wish to start towards the next level. I promise it won't take longer than an hour. Although rather intimidated and skeptical, he felt he could trust the man. After all, he somehow was able to sense an aura on him he could not yet see. Alright, but I need to be back soon to put these groceries in the fridge. The man laughed and said, Alright, let's go. The man drove the boy to the outer edge of his town before stopping at a dead end. They both got out and the man pulled a large metal capsule out of his trunk. Um, what's that? The boy said. You'll see. Let's go. They walked until they arrived at an eight-foot fence and hopped over it. The man then said, Pay very close attention to where we go from here. You won't be back for a long time. As the man and the boy made their way through the rough dirt patches, unkempt bushes, and dense grass, they finally got to the middle of an open field. Okay, let's get started, said the man. In this capsule, I want you to place your dream. It might look like it on the surface, but this is no ordinary capsule. Upon opening it, one can place their current thoughts, aspirations, and goals into the capsule simply just by thinking about them, and the capsule will start to place random objects that represent each of these dreams. When closed, the capsule won't be able to be opened until 30 years have passed, and if you successfully reach the next level of self-improvement, these objects should be drastically different the next time you open it. And if they are, you will gain the same ability that gave me the eyes with which I could see your aura. I'll head back to the car and wait until you're finished. The boy hadn't a clue what was going on. Capsule? Objects? How did he end up in such a strange predicament? 
But again, something about his human spirit made his feet stay firmly planted right where he was. When the man was out of sight, the boy closed his eyes and started to dream. He dreamt of a future of abundance, a friend group of high status men and women, a loving wife, a big house, a peaceful calm beach getaway, and a strong physique. And when he opened his eyes, he saw four different objects in the capsule. The first, a bow and arrow. The second, a $100 bill. The third, a self-help book. And the fourth, a dove with its wings tied together. A dove, he thought. He flashed back to his manifestation and the man in the field that kept repeating, don't capture the dove. He knew his fate was sealed and the two events couldn't have been a coincidence. Although he didn't yet understand the significance of it, he was determined to have it all figured out in 30 years. He closed the capsule, buried it underground, and made his way back to the truck. The man drove him back to his car, and before the boy could open his door, the man said, One last thing. Don't capture the dove. The boy's eyes widened. He almost felt the urge to scream or cry, but he restrained himself. With a smile and a nod, he left the man's car and went home. The birds chirped on the telephone poles. The dawn's sun cast an orange glaze onto the sky. It was the next morning, and the boy had woken up early. And it was the best he'd slept in months. With fresh vigor and intensity, he decided to reevaluate his goals and set them even higher than before. Because by doing so, he thought he might be able to get to the next level of self-improvement quicker. Now, he wanted to have read 25 books, have six-pack abs, and have $10,000 in his bank account in the next six months. With the hunger of a boar that had gone without food for several days, he started diving deep into as much wisdom as he could. He digested at least one book a week and applied what he had learned to his life. He revolved his diet around gaining muscle and went to the gym at least four times a week. And it was through all of that that he found a lucrative way of making money online, dropshipping. Countless hours of YouTube videos and books led him to eventually setting up his first online store. Once I finally reach this next level, I'll understand the meaning behind the dove, he thought to himself. By the end of the six months, he was just about at his goal, and at this point, the boy was almost unrecognizable. About 10 pounds of muscle put on, millions of words read, and thousands of self-help videos watched later, he was now a man on a mission. His mental health improved, and because he was so focused on his purpose, he no longer had such serious bouts of nihilism and daydreams of confusion. He took this day to review and reflect on everything he had done. The muscle had been gained, the money had been made, and the books had been read. He was certain he had made it to the next level, but despite this, he felt incomplete. Here he was, thinking if he were to get to the ideal version of himself, he would have somehow gained some deeper knowledge or enlightenment, but he still had no idea what the dove was meant to represent. It looks like I haven't made it to where I want to be yet, he said. After a brief period of feeling unmotivated and depressed, he got back on his feet. Maybe I'm just looking at this the wrong way. Let's look for more information. Again, he dove deep into all the information he could from the different masters of self-help online and kept applying each one to his life. Cold showers, meditation retreats, a slightly altered diet, and more hours spent grinding away at different self-improvement related tasks is what he ended up adopting. Another six months went by and his income, physique, and knowledge on the five pillars of self-improvement grew exponentially. And again, he took the time to reflect on what he had achieved and what he had gained along the way. When he thought about what that dove might represent now, he still had no idea. And this made him extremely frustrated. He did everything that the people online told him to do, and he had leveled himself up just like the man what the capsule told him he had to do, but he still felt unsatisfied. So what? Was this all for nothing? Like, yeah, I feel better physically and mentally, and I have a good amount of money, so why do I keep feeling like something's missing? And why do I feel like the solution to that void is by improving myself more? He thought back to what the man had asked him before they went to the field. His answers to his questions about why he was doing what he was doing and what he would do when he got there hadn't changed. They hadn't changed at all. And that is when it all started to make sense to him. From that point onward, his routine started to slowly change, but not in the way you might think. With each new piece of information he gathered, he took a second to question it. Was this type of advice applicable to his life? And if it wasn't, why not? Was there evidence that backed up or went against this advice? And did he feel this would take him farther or closer away from whatever it was that brought him joy out of this strange existence? By asking these questions, even with the things he had already adopted, he started to form his own subjective way of living. 
For him, the cold showers, meditation, and weightlifting felt genuinely positive. But his dropshipping business, reading countless self-help books, and doing nothing but work was not what his human spirit had really been craving. After realizing how much he was letting other people's opinions and advice guide his life, he soon came to understand that he viewed many of the people online as an idol, like a god pushing their followers to an idealized version of a person that the god itself devised. It was like he barely had any say in how he chose to think or act, and because of this, he felt like a human doormat. He may have been unrecognizable from his old self, and having a sense of direction may have helped him, but none of it felt like his own doing. Everything he was doing was in accordance with another person's ideals and lifestyle. Trying to understand the reason for his existence also lost some of its power over him. He no longer felt like he needed to have his life figured out, or like he absolutely needed to get to the next level of himself in order to realize what life or the dove really meant. For a few months, he decided to get lost in philosophy books because something about them called out to him. The next few months after that, it was fiction books. They offered a new way of perceiving his reality and deriving meaning from his strange and impossible to answer existence. He went through periods where he decided to lift weights and focus on building muscle mass, and other periods where he just wanted to do various physical activities like rock climbing, hiking, and skiing. He became his own role model and his own hero of his story. And through that, he devised his own definition of what self-improvement meant. Slowly, the rigidity of his self-image, other people's voices, and the desperate need to improve all transformed into that one repeating theme. Don't capture the dove. Thirty years had now passed, and the boy was now a well-developed man. Knowing how long it had been since he first buried the capsule, he had planned to make his way over to the open field. When he left his house and started towards his car on the street, he saw a beat-up red truck parked right behind it. The familiarity immediately struck him, and he knew it was the man with the leather jacket and goggles. As he walked up to it, the man got out of his car. It looked like he hadn't aged a single day since that encounter in the parking lot. But the boy didn't question it. Without saying a word, they both stared at each other intently with a <laughs> smile on their faces, until the boy decided to speak. Don't capture the dove. I get it now. The dove represents my dreams and aspirations. I was so desperately trying to capture them for so long, and each time I did capture my next dove, it left me feeling empty. Capturing the dove restrained me from the fluidity of the human condition and made me chase after an ideal brought about by other people's expectations of what it meant to live a happy, fulfilling, and good life. And what I needed to do was let the dove fly. I didn't know where that dove would take me a lot of the time. I had an idea of what my dreams were, but I stopped being afraid that I may never reach them, and I stopped feeling like I needed to improve. I stopped improving because I thought I was missing something. I improved because it made life more enjoyable. And through that process, I was as free as the dove itself. I don't take as much time to try and understand my existence anymore. Hell, I stopped asking myself what otherworldly being you must be years ago. I simply just experience all the different realms that this insanely complex and marvelous existence has to offer without attaching myself to any one single belief, ideal, or end goal. To some, that might cause absolute chaos within their psyche, but it works for me, and that's what matters most. The dove's wings have never been so outstretched as they are today. You know you didn't have to tell me that, right kid? The never-aging man said. I can see it in your aura. I know, said the boy, and I can see your aura too. But saying that out loud just helped me to solidify what I had been struggling to put into words for a long time. And just like the boy had done all those years ago, the man simply smiled and nodded and drove off. So now we are where our story began. The boy, now a 48-year-old man, had the capsule in his hands, turned the lever, and opened it. A massive array of all different types of objects could now be seen in the capsule. Guitar strings, fiction books, rocks, a computer screen, and bushels of wheat were some of the many things stuffed into this capsule. And each one of them kept transforming into several different objects every few seconds. Upon looking at it, the man was confused. He had expected to still see the dove. But just when he was about to close the capsule, under all the different assortment of objects, the dove revealed itself and flew into the sky. The man looked up with a serenity he had never experienced in his 48 years of living and let the dove disappear from his vision. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this short story I wrote and took something out of it. Thank you to all the patrons on this channel on Patreon. If you don't know what this is, it's a platform separate from YouTube where I'm posting exclusive content and you can talk to me one-on-one -on -one over the phone on there. Link in the description to that. And if you enjoy these short stories that I write that have life lessons within them, then check out this whole playlist of all these short stories that I've made similar to this one. Thank you very much for watching till the end and I hope you reach the next level of self-improvement.